PG Kelowna was special for a handful of reasons. I mean, to start with, I think, just because it was sort of the, the fourth, the last in, in sort of a, a road trip of doing four on the road. I know for both of us, we were super stoked to work with We Are The City. They were a band that, when, I mean, when we, Kevin and I were shooting stills at the first peak performance project from the front there, and we're just blown away by these guys. Um, and we're even more blown away by how young they were and super impressed. So the opportunity to work with them was a huge, um, special thing. I think more than anything, the song, as all the songs go on the record, and hopefully all the songs that we'll write, it's just about sort of like pushing a, pushing a little bit of a boundary for ourselves anyways. And so in that way, it's, it's definitely in line with what, where the song came from. And this is definitely pushing us out of what we would, no how we would normally do a video, you know, having like 60 other people involved in the song. And me, for instance, I'm not going to be playing anything which it definitely is not the case in the band. I'm definitely glad that we'll be pushed outside of our, our, usual, our usual zone, you know, the zone of just the three of us. My home videos won't mean a thing in 50 years. That day will come all I've done, render forgotten. And it was kind of like, you know, putting this event on in, in paradise and getting to break some windshields, you know, get to do everything. The venue was kind of like the, all of Kelowna's best points, like, rolled into one tiny little place. It's a boutique hotel built by some people who are really interested in the arts, really interested in music. So it's, it's a beautiful structure, it's really well designed, but it has this secret recording studio at the back with like a huge soundboard in there that bands can go and stay on the premises and then they can use the studio. So you've got a lot of things going on there that are really built around facilitating like shows or artists performing there or artists staying there and just creating there. And I think that's what kind of makes it special for me. It's a, it's a beautiful like, property, um, but it has this kind of like culture actually built into the architecture of it. Not just with the architecture, but the vibe of the space will, I think, be, you know, magical for a playground event. Uh, we designed this building in a way that we weren't sure uh, what exactly it was going to be used for. We didn't ever believe that that was our responsibility, but the responsibility of people that have a creative nature, like the people of Playground, to come in and really dress it up. We built the skin, now, you know, give us what you've got and let's, uh, let's you know, let's, let's play with it and let's see what happens. And that's what builds community and that's what builds culture is um, how people decide to use a space. So Dustin, um, runs these companies and, and we chatted with him about partnerships and um, it was just, I think it was just a good fit just given all the cultural and cultural things that they do, bringing the culture out of it and, and bringing culture to Kelowna. So they have this company called Streaming Cafe where it's a cafe and they have live performances but they've fit the whole place up with equipment so they can stream these performances, these video performances live online. They've had loads and loads and loads and loads of Canadian performers and, and international performers as well, but um, in particular, they've really supported a lot of Canadian artists. Well, any, any, anytime anyone wears flannel, they just look like they're <laughs> just setting, you know, they, they fit in well, you know. What I really set out here and what we've all set out at Streaming Cafe is to, to really create a space that's comfortable and that's relaxed so, you know, so you really do get the best out of an artist on, on the online, but as well as in-house here. More venues have popped up in the last couple of years. There's more, more interest in general, I think, have popped up. And certainly, you know, as those things kind of feed off each other, there's more bands that are popping up and good quality bands, you know. And I know ours is internet versus live show, but I think it, it's creating... It, you know, there's a parallel. I think it's it's bringing the entity of, of the crowd and the band into a bit of a mix, you know. I know they're on stage, but at the same time, they're, of what I've seen in Playground, it's like this, you know, this meshing of, of people, fans, and artists. So I think out of that, you get a, a, a unique 
kind of presentation that you wouldn't from watching them play at a show, right? You're, you're, you're actually being part of it. And with owning it, you, there's a different output to it and a different ownership and a different expression, I guess, that, that comes out of it. I kind of go for a more intimate setting. I really do. I think it's much more personal. I think I, I would feel much more uh, connected with the music. really like tiny, small, cool spaces with uh, where you get like the connection with the band and there's no boundaries between like the people. When you record the song and release a song, or even just release it to people, to people's ears, it's not really your song as much anymore. You're, you're hopefully trying to give it to other people. And so this is an actual, it's kind of cool because it's sort of like a physical demonstration of that. We're actually giving it to the other people who will be performing it as well. And I think that that's really cool. For better or worse, like yeah. people might love it or people might hate it, but you can make it completely different. And so there's a freedom there, I think. So, first of all, the song. You guys got your percussion bits and pieces? Uh, we, we got a few bits and a lot of pieces. Nice, that's yeah. a good combo. Can you yeah. talk us just through a few examples without completely spilling all the beans? Kane, Kane is the one that picked them all up. It's kind of like pieces of metal, a few of these kind of like stands for umbrella, like patio umbrellas, metal pipe hot and cold water piping. The whole bunch of fluorescent light bulbs, like the long ones, to smash. Oh, but sorry. some of them were already broken and started yeah, getting angry. Yeah, yeah, totally. PVC pipe. It was a saw. My mom suggested oh, it was dude, a saw. I saw that. It was those things that come in the even small cars that tire wedge. Tire car. It raises the, the car jack? up so you can oh, jack. jack. Yeah. Grab one of those. In total, do we have about 20 people worth of percussion? Yes. There was two spots. One was at my parents' cabin. My dad and mom just walked around. How about this? How about this? And my mom suggested this song. Then I stopped with uh, stopped with Hannah at this kind of like makeshift dump. I mean, all dumps are sort of makeshift, but this was just seriously like a, someone to just dump something on the road, and then people just started to add to it. So it's just kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in this car within here, right in there, we have. Um, a whole bunch of different odds and ends to bang on for the percussion section. Bits and bites. Bits and bites. Great crackers, that's a great snack. Anyway, my parents rounded all of this stuff up, so Andy and I approved and disapproved of a lot of stuff. Got it collected here. David hasn't seen it yet. <clears throat> Let's see it. Let's open it up. Watch the, uh, ow. Well, that's got some reverb, some trying? natural. Okay, there's some good sounds in there, I guess. <laughs> Okay, the classic, uh, my dad's a plumber. Oh, depending on what the key is. Try and get it as high as possible. <laughs> okay, straight off your roof. Yeah. That's oh, one. what the heck I don't is know, this, this is really bad. Look at that. <laughs> Baby wipes. And this one we can't use. That's so no, that's bad. That's disgusting. Maybe we'll put the rejects okay, this pile one, I guess. Put the rejects pile here. That's all right, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> that one. Pretty heavy. Okay. That one's pretty good. Or a little bit of this. <laughs> is it another one? All right. That's it. Is this all we have for people to bang on? This is all we have. See, the thing about this is, uh... I guess we add those back in the pile. I, no, I think that the kit, this, anything that you'd find in the garbage in a kitchen is just too disgusting. This coffee... Okay, that hold one... Hold on, hold on. But then, but then all of a sudden... No, no! Okay. That's another one I think this is just <laughs> gross. A little bit of work into it. All of a sudden, it's just this metal kind of looking thing here. It smells like coffee. This is everyone's favorite one. And these, I mean, this you just fill, hold on. Just, just go with me here. Going along. You get, you get one person. I will say I was excited for this. Now I'm starting to worry. I mean, these things are the best ones here. I mean, the idea was just like pieces of junk. This is exactly what that idea looks like. Well, Andy, are you we just really got a worried? lot of crap here. And now, well, now, Andy, I just want to—I want to kind of call you out here because yeah, you this were, is what I'm worried about. You were, you were there. You were there. This is what I'm worried for it to sound like.
foot and with a little bit of this going on. Because we've never really played in a place like this where it's kind of, I don't know, upscale, is that the right word? Without, yeah. without being like, without being too much, it's just kind of like really cool space. I'm excited to, you know, maybe be inspired by it. Yeah, you know? we, we play a lot of venues that have very nasty things written on the walls. Or you know what, some, I, another thought I had is just, it kind of seems like you're gonna just dry, keep driving by it. Like, okay, this is sweet. Wow, this place is really amazing. I wonder where the place we're going to is. <laughs> you come here and it's like, oh, this is really, really cool. I wonder what it's gonna look like. And is it fake? And is this, is this a dream? And then we went to dinner and came back and you guys had started setting up and there was a wall of speakers and it was like, wow, okay, this is, so we're really doing this. It's really cool, it looks amazing. Hours before, we're thinking we're going to be doing this, our first playground in a thunder shower. We're looking at the forecast and all the little yellow suns, except for our day, which was rain and thunder showers. We realized we needed to come up with a new plan for what we we're going to do. We had everybody outside apart from the person on piano. I know, I know. We were really banking on dry, dry weather. So yeah, so that became a big discussion because there's a, there was a lot of limiting factors in that building too. The way that we had made some artistic choices in terms of having the speaker stacks and having this kind of like um, uh, remote sort of isolated space and then having people outside and then suddenly it's raining and like well it seems obvious that we put them in that room but we wanted to maintain that artistic decision. We were dealing with like line of sight issues, where are we going to put people but in the end I think, um, I think it worked out really well because well A the weather turned out fine but it kind of, we ended up sort of going around the circumference, basically, of the sort of courtyard there, which was covered. It was definitely a good collaborative conversation in terms of giving and taking and trying to figure out and really identifying what is the most important, and then I think coming up with a great solution. Yeah, I think I'd be over here just... There it is. <laughs> just kind of like... Like, that's one of those things where, like, boundaries and creative, yeah. um, in, in creative exercise really are helpful. You just gotta recognize that you're not, that, that they're there to help, I guess, and, and use them that way. It's, I always like reflect these things back to shooting stills, I know, but it's, it's the same process we've been through so many times with a set, where you build a set. I mean, you're trying to shoot something, you're trying to you know, put across a message or a mood. And when you dress the set, you fill it up with stuff. Generally, that's the, you know, the, the first instinct is to fill up the set and fill up the frame. And then what you immediately start doing before you shoot anything is pulling things out. And you just want to get to that smallest amount where you're getting enough of the message through, but just with a few key things. I think that's true in, in so, many different, uh, so many different applications. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you ever listen to a song. You listen to it, you listen to it, you listen to it, and then two minutes in, one thing grabs you. And you love that one thing two minutes in, and then it doesn't even happen again in the song, or it doesn't happen for another minute. That thing is, if it was happening the whole song, it wouldn't be so sweet. But it's like, it's like, it's like the little, the little scoop of ice cream on the side of your, on the, on the side plate of, uh, that you get with your pie, you know? It's like if you just had ice cream, the ice cream wouldn't taste, it wouldn't be so sweet. That cold wouldn't be like, wouldn't feel so cold because you wouldn't have the hot pie. Think of, think of the song and think of the band's last album, right? The album they just released by them, like it's... And particularly the song Friends Hurt. If there's one thing that's really noticeable about that album and the songs on it, it's, it's the spaces. It's the, the instruments that kind of aren't in the song or the instruments that are played so sparingly, like everything feels so deliberate. And that's really important. A lot of music is uh, about the story behind the story. If you didn't count that with the notes that you hear, then it would just be chaos, really. Especially with We Are The City, they can take space between the notes, as in like three minutes between the notes, so it's great. Makes uh, 
makes the crowd awkward, and that's always a good time. The band is really essentially, they're giving up a lot, and they're putting a lot of trust in everyone that's going to be here. But the collaborative effort can be so much more than the sum of our parts that I think even if you lose, you learn something in the process. And I don't think there's any way to lose when you have that kind of idea. So I am just thrilled that something like this even exists and that people are taking chances and are working together and are trying something new because you don't always see people that have that headspace. Kevin and I have learned that, but I think through Playground, it's really become crystal clear that it's all about chucking ideas out and not being too married to any of them. It's an evolution, just keep moving forward. Some things will, it seems like a great idea, but when in combination with other elements which are necessary, you have to kind of let things go. And I think, I think this one was a, such a perfect example of that because everyone on board from Dustin to the band, Brandon, Sound, like the, everyone and, and, and Playground in general, like us as a team, there was, there was yeses and nos, there was pushback and, and give and take the whole way through. And I think everyone was really bought into that. And it, that's why it all came together super well. And everyone I think felt like, wicked, we created this together. Yeah. <laughs>
Hurting. 